Hello everyone, once again this is G, and in today's episode we're going to look at a couple things nuclear. First, we're going to see how to make your reactor smaller, and second, how to make your reactor hotter. On a personal note, when I first saw the update, I was actually pretty surprised at how low the melting points were set for uranium and the fission waste products. And I also do hope that both molten salt and molten lead will be added in this coolants, since they don't boil until well over 1000 degrees C. But for now, we're stuck with water, and so we're going to make the best of it. So let's just dive right in. Now, if you think about the way this reactor produces steam, well, it's actually not too dissimilar from a hot steam vent. And actually, Tony Advanced made a great video on taming hot steam vents, so check out the link in the description below for that. So to build this, first we're going to need to build a containment vessel, which is made of bunker tiles made of steel. We have a bunker door here on the side. We have an auto sweeper made of thermium. This can also be made of niobium because the steam outside the reactor is below 500. But if you look inside the reactor, you can see the waste is well over 500 degrees. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Next, we have a conveyor over here that brings in uranium into this receptacle. And that's where the auto sweeper picks it up. Down here, we have the nuclear waste. And it doesn't actually look like that in real life. But here it is. And it's at over 490 degrees. And it just pulls up here, and then it just spills over the edge into a containment area. And I'm not doing anything with this here, but if you look at the temperature of the waste here, it's at almost 485 degrees. Use your imagination what you can do with that. Now, up here we have a little bypass pump, a humble enough device until you see it pressurize a room to 1,000 kilos per tile. And this particular setup uses bead of naphtha down here and water drip. Next, we have a thermium aqua tuner here to cool the turbines. Although, again, niobium would do it just as well if you have a niobium volcano and maybe no tungsten. Then we have petroleum layer in the bottom, steam on top. This is to make sure that no water gets deleted when it's coming out of this drip. This drip is here to cool the steam in here to optimal temperature. And it's controlled by this thermo sensor over here. And it's set to 375. So if the steam hits below 375, this vent shuts off. And the amount of liquid going into the vent here is controlled by this valve here. It's set to at 5 kilos per second. And I'll show you the plumbing in just a minute, but let's have a look at a few other things. First, we've got these airflow tiles here, here, and here. And this is to make sure that no liquid goes in and out of these areas, and it stays inside. And we only have steam passing through. Next, we have this door here, made of steel, and it's controlled by the sensor here. So the door stays closed if the steam here is too hot, and once the steam reaches a nice temperature, so if it's below 380, the door will open up and let the steam into the turbine hall. Okay, next we have the turbines themselves. There's a total of nine of them. Each turbine has only two inlets open. This is because the temperature of the steam is around 370, 375. And the first eight turbines here work at almost 100% all the time. And the last one gets kind of the leftovers of the steam. Okay, so we can see the overall plumbing here, but let's zoom in on the reservoirs. Okay, so we have three tanks here. And first of all, we have our feed at the top, which is currently disconnected because the system is filled, but you use this to initially fill the system with water. Then we have our tank on the right here. And this tank is being fed by this pipe here, which is at 7.2 kilos per second of water maximum. And this is the water that's coming out of all the steam turbines. Next, this tank on the right is feeding the tank in the middle. And at the same time, if this pipe is empty or doesn't have enough water, then this is where the feed would then come in and top it up. But, like I said, this is no longer necessary. Then, the tank in the middle, it has a couple of feed-outs. So first, it has a bridge here, which takes priority. So it feeds into the system down here. And I know it's a spaghetti, but I'll show you an expanded version in just a minute. We have two things going on here, basically. We have the cooling loop over here. This trips water in here to cool the steam to the right temperature. And then we have the bypass pump over here, which trips just a little bit of water to keep the bypass pump running. We also have this aqua tuner with a coolant in the middle, but this is part of a separate loop. And again, I'll show you an expanded version in just a minute. Next, we have our third tank over here. And this is the tank that feeds the reactor. So water comes in here. This is initially comes from the turbines, goes through all this, and then eventually makes its way to this third tank. And then we have a little loop over here, which is being topped up by this bridge. And the general idea is that when water is not added into the reactor, waste goes at over 500 degrees in temperature inside the reactor. And then when water does get added, it takes in the heat. And this way, overall, you get more than 400 degrees in temperature. You get closer to 475, 460 on the way out. Okay, here's how the loop works. 
So normally it loops around here and it bypasses the shutoff if the shutoff is closed. Then if the reactor is full, this liquid sensor notices it. See how it did that? And now the liquid shutoff is open and the water just recirculates and no water makes it past the liquid shutoff and therefore no water makes it into the reactor. Now this shutoff is controlled by a buffer in between and I'll show it to you here. Here it is. And you can see the buffer is set at 37 seconds. That's very important. If you go into 38 seconds, you're likely to melt the reactor and below 37 seconds, you're not gonna get the same temperature. It's gonna get cooler. So th I found that 37 seconds is the perfect timing for this. Over here, you can also see a couple things going on. There's a, a little bit of naphtha and a little bit of petroleum. And this shutoff is actually made out of thermium because it's coming into contact with all this heat. And this is just a little liquid lock, but you could rearrange it and then make this out of steel so it doesn't touch the heat inside. I just did it like this. Now, one other thing here is this length of the pipe here is particular because you want to make sure that uh, it's long enough to allow for water not to get stuck in this pipe. You see, there's just a little bit of water here and you can allow water like maybe up to here, but no more. Otherwise, it's going to get stuck in here and it's going to boil in here and cause all sorts of problems. So you want to make this buffer here long enough to prevent water from getting stuck in the hot chamber here. In fact, this setup is actually pretty similar to the way that you auto refill rockets with fuel. So I just kind of adapted it to this. Now, I know that this particular plumbing setup here is pretty compact, and so it can be pretty hard to see what the heck's going on here. So let me show you how all this looks when it's despaghettified. Okay, here we go. All despaghettified. So we begin with our priming feed over here, and this fills the water into the system until these two reservoirs are full. And once this pipe here backs up, then it no longer feeds the water. And after that, you can disconnect it or you can leave it. Then water gets fed into three things here. First, the bypass pump trip. This is to make sure that steam keeps getting into the, into the system to get cooled. And then this is followed by the cooling drip. This bridge over here is what takes the priority for the bypass pump. Then once this pipe backs up, then the water will proceed to the reactor feed. And this is where we have this loop that's controlled by this shutoff here which is then controlled by this buffer and the sensor. The buffer is set to 37 seconds, and the sensor just checks to see if there's water in the pipe, just a liquid element sensor. And once the system is primed, then water will just continue to be fed from turbines, from the output, into this tank here. And this is just to give it a little bit of buffer, because you need like maybe a couple hundred kilos of buffer. So this tank uh, is perfect for that. And then the system just continues to recirculate and no more feeding is required. Additionally, we have this turbine supercoolant loop, which is totally separate, and this just feeds supercoolant, and it's just got a temperature sensor on it that controls this aqua tuner here. So that way the supercoolant is not too cold. And that's pretty much it. Once again, this has been Greasy Hammer, and if you found this helpful, then smash the like button, share, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.